everybody, I'm pretty excited. I have here a box from Franz Foamworks that they sent up to me to review some goodies inside. And then I'll do a bit of a review on whatever's inside. I've cut the tape, but otherwise I haven't taken a peek. Presented nicely. We have a golden letter and a golden ticket of sorts. I need to read into this a little bit more. I'm inserting this afterwards into that unboxing video just because I was opening things up and not knowing what things were. This was an actual invitation to a Humans vs. Zombie event on April 2nd. You can register for that. Check out the link in my description box below or you can reach out to Franz Foamworks. This is happening on April 2nd and this is happening at Grove City College. I've seen some rumblings online. I think there's a few of you planning to go, or at least you've heard of it, but look it up, check it out, register for it, and I hope you will go and enjoy that. I'm about 14 hours drive away, but I'm still tempted. We'll see. This might be one of those times that being up in Canada is a little tricky. Oh man, we have a bag of goodies. We have a clowny patch. I'm going to be adding these to my dart tag <laughs> vest that I have. I need to mount that on my wall. Thunderdome patch. Pennsylvania. This, this is an awesome patch. This is massive. And a patch from Franz Foamworks. This is, uh, this is a great jumpstart to my, my very meager patch collection, which is one patch from Out of Darts. And then we have some cool stickers. Containment Crew, Turf Blaster Springs. End War sticker, so cool. And we have some hardware for later. All right, let's get into the package. Oh. oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. I'm so excited right away. I recognize this right away. This is a shell meant to be used with the double crusher. I can tell by this seal up here. So I'm excited to try that out. I have tried the big rig shells, but I have not tried the double crusher ones. And this is a buckshot one. We have a cool looking stock attachment. I like the look of that. Oh, awesome. Wow. Jolt included. This is cool. I've seen this on their Instagram and thought it was a neat idea. Commented, I'm pretty sure, a few times saying, hey, these are really, really neat. I'm very excited to get into this as well. Look at this. The tactical version of the string shot. I was asked about colors. I got it in this cool purple, which I've been loving lately and printing a lot of my Meeker stuff in purple. If you don't know, this is a blaster that runs off elastic cord, no spring or anything. It is primed by sliding this back and that brings this elastic cord back here. And then a dart is in this channel. You pull the trigger and it fires. The cool thing about this one is it's actually magazine fed. It takes Talon mags. I can't wait to test this out more as well. This looks really nice. I like the profile of this. I like how minimal it is. I actually really like string blasters. I've printed a couple other ones here and there and they're always a hit with the kids and everything. They're just very unique. It has rail underneath too. I'll, I'll be putting all the tactics on this. What? Whoa, no way. They actually included a Talon Meg? That is incredibly thoughtful. I'm blown away by that. That's so awesome. I can't wait to load this up and try it out for you guys. Welcome back to the other camera angle. Let's go through these one at a time. I'll probably be pretty quick through most pieces so I can spend most of the time on the string shot. First up, we have this awesome Jolt body kit. I'm pumped to have received this one. This is the Galactic Creations interpretation of Taffy Skewer, which is really neat. I've chatted with Taffy and I'm a big fan of the skewer. I really need to make one. I've just friction fitted all of this together right now. I've used some tape. I will probably do a more permanent attaching of everything to it. It's really neat. It looks really cool. I actually do some games where people use just jolts. So this is a lot more exciting of a jolt to use than just a regular plain Jane jolt. I love the dart storage down there in the magazine too. I think that is a really nice touch. And I also love that this actually has, there's a target. 
that this actually has a rail on it. I think that is pretty sweet. Pretty tactical jolt. They come in seasons where you can sign up. You can get all the different takes on classic blasters. Individual kits start around $15. These are really, really cute. And for jolt lovers out there, I know some people collect jolts. I could see this being very appealing. I really like this one. I'm going to put it up on my shelf. I should mention too, there's a charitable component to this whole series. You can check out more about that on FranzFoamWorks.com. Let's talk about this stock point. I attached this to my Mark III. It's pretty cool, I will definitely say. It works pretty well. It's pretty comfortable to shoulder. It's probably a little bit less wiggly than my regular stock for the Mark III, just because I can tighten this one up with a, with a screw. My biggest issue with this stock point would probably be actually the the color. I think blue is kind of a bold choice to go with this. I feel like I'd be a lot more likely to use this on my Mark III and leave it on my Mark III if it was gray or black or even, even if it was orange. You know, a color more likely to be found on a blaster already. It kind of clashes. Maybe I would paint it at some point. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. It's neat. The print quality is great. I think the design is neat but I'll probably stick with a stock that matches a little bit better. If I paint my Mark III at some point, and this is a blue I love, then it would be fair game again. The only other kind of minor thing is it would be kind of cool if the material on this back black piece was actually something a little bit softer than just the same PLA as the stock. Um, but I mean, through clothes and everything, that's a pretty minor, minor gripe. I just, I don't know if I'll end up using it a whole lot. Now we have this buckshot round for the double crusher. I've been looking forward to trying this one. I did print out and try some shells for my big rig. These ones were free to download and try out. They're a little bit of a different fit from the double crusher. So I already had an idea of how these work. You'll notice that the ones for the Double Crusher have an O-ring around them. They kind of sit in a little groove so that they can really make a good seal. <laughs> these are self-ejecting shells. So this Buckshot variant, this actually will fire out six half darts at one time out of the Double Crusher. So one of the ideas around this combo is you put your Mega XL dart in the top, put this in the bottom. So with your first shot, you can break a shield. And then with your second shot, because they don't have that shield anymore, you can pepper them with a spray of half darts. I will say it is a tight squeeze in there. Probably these darts are brand new, so it'll probably get better over time. Oh, that's pretty squeezy. Oh, my precious new darts. <laughs> darts are loaded in six half links are in there currently all right here we go we're going to bust the shield and then hit them with the buckshot so you probably noticed that didn't self eject and these are self ejecting with six half darts in there they don't tend to now the designer did say that with three half darts it does tend to eject personally i would rather take that six shot impressive scatter of half darts like a real buckshot shotgun than have three and have it eject but that could be definitely up to you it's a little bit trickier to load the darts if you're only loading in three you kind of have to find something to push them down in there but let's see if this self ejects with just three half darts shield busted and this still stayed in for me it might just be, this is pretty snug, might require a little bit of sanding around this. Maybe a few points away, the self-ejecting is kind of hit or miss. To be honest, the self-ejecting was a little bit hit or miss with these shells for the big rig too. They run $9.50 for a two pack, and then you get some discounts as you go up in quantity. Myself, I would probably go for like a six pack that I think is 25. All the prices I'm talking about are US because I think most of you watching are US, but obviously they do ship to Canada. The website will do the conversion. I would love to have like six of these in a little pouch. I'd preload them with the buckshot. You can get them to fire rival as well, but I kind of think the fun of these personally is just firing out and peppering with so many. All right, let's get to, in my opinion, the star of the show, the string shot. This is the tactical version with rails on the top and on the bottom. A real mishmash of colors, but look at these tactics. Very small profile blaster that we are able to put 
an 18 round Talon magazine into you. That is really something. The grip is actually pretty comfortable. I know it looks very straight up and down. It's been, it's been done in a way that it's not wasting a whole lot of space. You get your magazine in there and it's tried to be minimal otherwise. It has a little bit of curve on the back. The ergonomics of this are actually pretty good. Prime it back like this, push it forward, and you have a dart in there and ready. Hit my target like I usually do with this. This thing is very consistent. I just wanted to get some close-ups of putting the mag in the blaster and priming it as well, because I think it's really cool. When we pull this back, it puts the cord over this notch here. A little bit of plastic on the inside moves back and leaves room for the next dart in the magazine to come up. And then that bit of plastic pushes that dart into this channel. So it's simple design, but it's really, really clever. I really like that there's a rubber ball here as the mechanism to uh, keep this faux hammer out. So this is what this keeps my this keeps my magazine in. If I push up on this little hammer, it releases it. So there's a little rubber ball in there keeping the pressure on it. I'll give you guys a closer look all the way around the blaster here before we go back to regular view. I'm going to awkwardly prime it sideways here so that you guys can see. There we go. Dart in and aiming at target. Hard to do this so you can see. Oh, just missed the target. I've been hitting it every time, but I just missed it and I'm crouching awkwardly behind the camera. So cool. <laughs> Definitely been hitting a lot of targets with this. I am a big fan. If we're going to talk about critiques for this, I do have a couple. One would be, it could be a little bit tricky to quickly get that magazine in there. It would be nice if this kind of flared out a little bit to make that a little easier. That's kind of a minor little, a minor little nitpick. The other one, when I first tried this, I did have to sand these edges right here where the string was catching. Without sanding those, when I pulled the trigger, nothing happened. So that's just something that, I think that would be good if that was done before. Uh, I know I was paranoid about sanding it too far, so I really took my time literally just taking off a tiny bit by tiny bit because I just didn't want to go too far. I wanted to find that sweet spot where it would not ever accidentally go, but it would consistently let go. And I, I did get there. I was able to get there. I'm pretty comfortable with this stuff. I mean, I, I mod things. I'm pretty into it. And probably a lot of people getting something like this are no strangers to Nerf. But if you got this for a gift for someone, or if someone wasn't a big modder, they were a big collector, it would be a little bit of a bummer for them to open it up and for it to not work. And then they kind of have to go through that confidence bit of how much to sand it, etc. So that would be a nice thing to maybe take care of. The only other thing, and I was talking to one of the designers, is the trigger is very floppy. I don't actually notice that as a problem. Once it's primed, it actually feels pretty good because this band is kind of pushing down and putting some pressure on the trigger. It feels fine, but when it's not, it's just, it's, it's a little bit floppy. I think they are planning to adjust the width of this trigger. I think it's just maybe a little bit too thin. So that might actually be fixed in later versions of this or even sooner than later versions of this, which I think would be great. For performance is actually very good for a stringer. I'm going to see if I can hit that target a few times in a row for you guys. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Oh, I missed. Just barely. You could hear it ding, and it's kind of weird that I had it facing me while I was doing that. But 
You guys trust me by this point. That target is about 20 to 25 feet away, so not super far away, but very, very consistent. 76. 87. 86. Duplicate 86. 87. 86. 85? Duplicate 85? Wow. And I'm pretty confident in my chronograph these days just based on some baseline testing against my Mark III, some standard Elite, a Rival, just a bunch of different blasters. So, wow, that was pretty snappy. That consistency, along with the size of it, along with being able to use half darts and magazines, this is going to be my new favorite backyard blaster for those lower games where we're shooting below 100, playing with the kids. This is really good. If you need or want your FPS to be over 100, this isn't the blaster for you. If you don't need that and you don't mind the bit lower FPS in a sidearm, then this is pretty fun. I, I will admit I kind of underestimated this blaster. I had seen it around. I'd seen some Instagram pictures of it and I thought it was cool. I thought it looked neat, but because it was a stringer, I wasn't expecting this level of consistency, uh, to be honest, or even performance. So it really was a pleasant surprise. If I was gonna compare this blaster to anything, I would compare it to something like this crossbolt. They're both using almost identical looking cord. So even though they're a very different blaster, I feel like this is a fair comparison. Uh, I'm certainly not getting target. I'm not getting the consistency out of this, obviously, uh, because it's not short darts. I just have regular elites in here too, which they're just going everywhere. And this is a lot bigger blaster. This one would be about 65 feet per second or so. I mean, this is a cool blaster, don't get me wrong, but I just really show it because this is one of those few nerf blasters that are actually powered by a cord. It would have kind of a similar function to the string shot where you're Oh, it's not going to do it because it's empty. You prime this back, it catches, you pull the trigger, releases the catch, and then this cord speeds your dart forward. So that's why I mention it. This is a pretty amazingly compact version of this. I have probably ran... I missed. Oh, I missed again, my goodness. There we go. I've put almost this whole package <laughs> through this blaster. I've probably fired this more than I would typically fire a new blaster that comes into my hands, so that's always a good sign. I think if they kind of fix that wiggly trigger, do that tiny bit of sanding ahead of time if it needs it so that when you get it, it's ready to go, I think this is a heck of a blaster. I'm actually kind of thinking I wouldn't mind having another one. For the purposes of this review, this was all sent to me. I did not buy these. Uh, they were sent to me for my review. The opinions are still my own. I'm a very enthusiastic nerfer, as you guys probably know if you follow me, but I don't mind saying my real opinion, and that's what they wanted too. And I think with a couple little bits of feedback, it will make a really, really good blaster that much better. What a great design. Speaking of the design, obviously this came from France Foam Works, but this blaster was a collaboration between Zero Blade and L, and that design was collaborated on and added to by Chaotica, who made some changes, made some tweaks, and then working with France Foam Works, they're getting those printed, assembled, and sent out to people like me and you. This is $30 without rails, and 35 width for the tactical version. You can select your primary color and your base color. And for that money, you're getting something pretty unique that a lot of other people aren't going to have. And that was designed, created, and printed and sold by hobbyists in the community. The rumor is that the Mark II will accept angled talon mags. Check out the website. They have some pre-built fates. They have a clear out on some pre-built knockouts. They have a bunch of other accessories. Go check it out. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. I know it was a little bit longer. Hopefully you skipped around if you wanted to, if you're only interested in getting right to the string blaster, which I understand. This thing's awesome. Until next time. There we go. I will still be firing this thing. I hope you enjoyed this overview of the stock, this cool custom jolt skin, the buckshot, and the tactical slingshot. If you have any questions about any of these, leave a comment below. I'm always happy to talk nerf or everything else.